and said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone of you to the Congress of this year in Jesus' name. What a wonderful God will serve who has brought us all together from various countries and various countries of the world. We have a purpose for many days. And I pray that that purpose in your life, in my life, in the church at large, the Lord will fulfill in Jesus' name. That's the reason why the Lord has brought this together at the beginning of the year. And even though we just have finished a retreat of more than conquerors, how many of you were there? I knew you were there, of course. Many of you were ministering to you. And I were more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Conquering the world and conquering everything that opposes the gospel. And we're going to take this gospel all over the world in Jesus' name. With the spirit of the conqueror. Not a coward, not somebody laid back. As if you're beating like, you know, like a dog that went inside, inside the river. But we stand up like giants in the land. Are there giants in this land? Why don't you stand up? Like giants in the land, knowing the Lord has called us to be more than conquerors. And we will be in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you come to this Congress for leaders, for apostles, prophets, Evangelists, pastors and teachers, bishops as the Bible calls us. We want to be able to listen like leaders and pray like leaders and understand like leaders and go forth like leaders and manifest and respond to the word of God like leaders. So that what the Lord has brought us for, the Lord will fulfill it in our lives in Jesus' name. And uh, we have all the time before us, uh, you know, to have the watch of the Lord. The, the Lord has given us life and time. And we're going to spend that time to listen to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Why don't you just raise your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I today. You brought us for this. We came for this. And we're going to see His fulfillment in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time because we know you brought us together, you protected us, you preserved us, you called us, and you brought us to this Congress so that you can impart something greater than what we ever got into our lives. And I pray, Lord, it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. I will pray that Jesus will be King, Jesus will be Lord, and Jesus will be Master of this uh, Congress in every heart, every life, every section of this uh, Congress in Jesus' name. Do something in every life. Do something in every local church and do something for every minister here so that, Lord, we will be able to go forth with the spirit of the conqueror and we will do what you have called us to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak the word to our hearts tonight, Lord, and Lord, we pray. You grant us understanding, you grant us illumination, you grant us inspiration, grant us revelation, so that, Lord, your word will make a definite impact in every life, every heart, in Jesus' name. Confirm the word in everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And give me another amen before you sit down. Thank you very much. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18, verse 19, and verse 20. Matthew chapter 28. And Jesus came and spake unto them, unto them, meaning unto the apostles, meaning unto his own disciples, meaning unto the church. And he's speaking to us the same words to this saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore into all the into go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you how often? Always, even unto the edge of the world, unto the edge of the age. Here the Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, a mighty resurrection, a powerful resurrection, something that never happened before. And the angel came from heaven, rolled away the stone, 
And then the mighty power of the Almighty, he rose up from the dead. And now eventually after appearing to some disciples, you know, how many days, the 40 days, now at the end, he told them, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. He says, because of that, not because of your surrounding, not because of how you feel, not because of the economy or the whatever is happening around, what, not, not because of the crisis in your nation or in the, your surrounding. It says, because all power is given unto me with that understanding and with that revelation. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. It says, all nations, which means there's no exception. We do not have the liberty to say we're going to do it here, we're not going to do it there. We're going to preach the gospel there, but we're going to neglect this one. These others will accept and these others will reject. He says we're going to all nations and then we teach them. After teaching them, they come to know the Lord. They are born again and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost, and then he says that we don't release them after that. We not disciple them, we mature them, we develop them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you that is Christ's imperative, that is Christ's commandment, and that is Christ's commission that he gave to his own disciples. I say the imperative is given to you and to me today. It's the same commandment authoritatively. It's given to you and to me today. It's the same commission. It's given to the whole church today that we go to all the world. We cannot just see it in one location and say we're going to preach the gospel. I'm doing a great work here. I'm doing a mighty work here. It says we we'll rise up and then we we'll move forth into all the parts of the world. That means you are involved and involved and we're not just going to see it in one local country here in one local church and say that we're doing the world. It is we're taking the whole world to the whole world so that the people of the world they will hear and through you and through me and through this church they're going to hear in Jesus name. And when it says all the nations, there's some, some of the nations that are simple, some of the nations are tough, some of the nations you know everything will just open before some of the nations are very difficult to penetrate. But it says whether they are high or low, whether they they are full of darkness, or maybe they have some light, or whether their economic, uh, economic condition is very good or very bad, whatever the condition may be, we go into all those nations and preach the word of God. And by the grace of God, we'll be doing it, we're going to do it more. I said we're going to do it more. And when the call comes to you that this is where to do where to go now and take this torch of the gospel, this light of the gospel, and this saving gospel, transforming gospel unto any part of the world. I pray that without confronting with flesh and blood, you rise up and do it immediately in Jesus' name. It tells us in Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, I'm reading there from verse one. Still so continue with the commission and the imperative the Lord is giving to you, to me, to the whole church. It says in Second Timothy chapter four, verse one, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Here Paul the apostle talking to Timothy said, I'm giving you a charge. I'm giving you a commission, and I give you this before the Lord and before His angels and the whole, before the whole of heaven and the whole of the earth. And I want to remind you, Timothy, and I want to remind you too that we're going to be examined, we're going to be judged as a result of what we do with this gospel. That's why it says, I'm telling you before God, He will judge the quick and the dead. He will judge those who are alive. He will judge those who have died before us now. And it says, because that judgment day is coming. And because the day is coming when God is going to ask you, what did you do with what you heard? What did you do with the imperative for the church? What did you do with the commission you have given to the church? That's why it says, now without understanding Timothy, what are you to do if you are not going to be condemned on the final day? It says, preach the word. Be instant in season, and be instant out of season. You reprove, you rebuke, you exhort without long suffering and doctrine. Then he says, Don't you think that she knows the moment you just declare the word? Everybody will say, Yes, I believe. Yes, I accept. Yes, we're going to follow. He says, Maybe some people that will not want to hear some doctrine. Look at verse 3. It says, For the time will come when they shall not endure, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but 
after their own loss shall they give to themselves teachers having itching ears he said even then preach the word even when they reject preach the word even when they resist preach the word and it says and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable but he said in the midst of it all when they appear to reject in the midst of it all when they appear to resist in the midst of it all when they will not want to accept the balanced truth of the word of god preach that word and then in verse 5 watch thou in all things endure afflictions give the word of an evangelist and be full proof of thy ministry that's what we are going to do and we're going to keep on doing it until the very edge in jesus name revelation chapter 2 Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 25. Here are the words of the risen Christ, the glorified Christ. He speaks from heaven and he speaks to his church. And he says, this is what to do. Have you noticed that what Jesus said before he went to the, before he went to the cross, the same thing he emphasized after he came back from the dead. And then what he said on earth, he now says from glory. It says, I told you before, I'm telling you again that I move from earth to heaven and I'm speaking from glory. That does not change the commission, the imperative that he gave to the church. As I says, Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, it says, But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. We're going to do that. And then it says, And he that overcometh, I am an overcomer. I said, I am an overcomer. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the edge, to him will I give power over the nations. Have you noticed in verse 25, until I come, he said, I gave you a commission, that commission will never wear out. That commission will never be stale. That commission will never come to an end. You do that until I come. Hold fast that word. Hold fast that commission, hold fast that imperative, hold fast that duty and responsibility the Lord has given to you and never say, I'm going to retire, I need to retreat, I need to go back on this, I think I've done enough, I'm going to hand over to all the people to do it. He says, you hold on my words and my word until I come. And then he says, unto the very end, that's what we're talking about, Christ's imperative to his church till the end, Christ is present here today praise the lord i say christ is present here today praise the lord and he's still speaking to his church and to his servants he is the most his voice is the most important voice that we can ever hear and what he tells us is the most important that we ought to hear and that we ought to give our hearts and mind our attention to and his is the, is the most important command and all the all other voices must be silenced and rejected so that we can give him undivided attention i want to appeal to you during this congress remember that you came as a leader you came as a pastor you came as an overseer you came as somebody that god has honored and anointed you appointed you so that you can do something in this generation for the people in your generation and you come like it's a great privilege others could have been here but they were not they have not been invited and you are invited and you are here you want to pay rapt attention to everything the lord is saying you want to say oh lord i'm hearing i'm going to be what you are telling me is talking to the church who will say the church who is the church and what is the church the church is the flock of christ's sheep who believe him and follow him and obey him it's not just everyone that darkens the uh, that darkens the territory or the threshold of a church building but the people who believe the people who have repented and the people who follow the lord jesus christ and they obey him the collection of those people the assembly of those people the congregation of those people the flock of such sheep that believe such sheep that obey and such sheep that are following the lord that is the church what's the church the church is the assembly of called out converted disciples who love the lord and serve him as master it's not just you know the people that say i believe in god i believe in god and then they are not disciples of christ they're not learning from christ but the people that actually learn from him they have been converted they have been called out of the world out of the sins of the world out of the shameful things the people of the world do there is a conversion there is new creation in their lives and then these people when they gather together that's what you call the church 
What's the church? The church is Christ's army of committed soldiers who endure hardness to possess the territories for his glory. And they are the people that are militant and they are triumphant. And they go out in the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord. They are not afraid of persecution. They are not afraid of conflict. They are not afraid of difficulties. These are mighty armies of the Lord. And they are soldiers that are willing to endure hardness so that they go to that territory and that territory and that territory so that they can possess the land. And that is who we are. I said that is who we are. We are an army of soldiers, soldiers for the Lord, committed soldiers that are willing to take our territories for the Lord. What's the church? The church is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ, that means the members are the people that love and labor for Him, for the salvation of the world. What's the church? The church is Christ's building of lively stones and a temple indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And as the church is calling, it's not telling the people who are nominal, the people who are superficial, the people who do not have the grace of God in their lives. It's calling the people. He said, I've touched you. Go touch other people. I've transformed you. Go be an agent of transformation. In the lives of other people, I put that courage and that conviction of the soldier. He said, you go tell other people that Teaching. They can become like champions and, and giants in the kingdom of God. He's done something in you and he's calling you that you go out and get that done in the lives of other people towards the church. The church is the congregation of pardoned people, purified people, peculiar people that are shining and reflecting Christ's light and glory here on earth. It means that you are now a peculiar treasure and a peculiar a disciple of the Lord. Your life is not like the life of every deacon heart. Something has happened that brings a change in your life. And that same peculiarity the Lord has put in your life, He wants you to go and put that in the lives of other people. By the grace of God, it will happen in Jesus' name. And you know, because uh, the church is uh, based, uh, the church is also a holy nation of kingdom citizens who are dead to the world and they are alive unto God. And he said, because that life has come in you, you want to be able to go to all those who are dead in sins and trespasses and then wake them up so that they turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is both resurrection and life, and he'll bring that life unto them. He will do it in Jesus' name. We're talking about Christ who has absolute authority on the church by redemption through his sacrifice, his substitution, that he has absolute right over every believer. And the Lord has absolute right over you. Think about that. That now you are born again, he has absolute right over you. He raised you from the dead, he has absolute right over you. And he's taking you to heaven, he has absolute right over you. He shed his blood for you, he has absolute right over you. And so you cannot say, well, I don't think I can do that. You cannot say that because since you are redeemed by him and your life depends upon him and his redemption, his sacrifice is what makes you to be who you are and to come to the kingdom at such a time like this. He has that absolute right, authority, control over you. His commandments abiding on you, on me, on every one of us. His final command is the most important demand upon our lives. The final command is going into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. The final command of the Lord Jesus Christ has absolute possession of our lives and demand upon our lives. That means then our commitment, our life, our all, not just for some time, but for all time, until the end, must be rendered back unto him. That's what we have come here to remind ourselves that Jesus Christ has the final authority and the full authority and the absolute authority and authority over you and over me because of divine ownership since he has bought us and purchased us and he brought us into the kingdom. That's why you personally are thinking about this imperative of Christ, this commandment of Christ, this commission of Christ upon your life. And from now until the very end, I pray God will give you grace. I said I pray God will give you grace. That you will be and you will do what he has called you to be and called you to do in Jesus' name. Christ's imperative. But I'm thinking about this in three perspectives. Number one, Christ's model for the church. It's not just that he gave us a commandment, he has set a model, an example, a perfect example at that. 
It, there is Christ's model for the church. Number two, Christ's might for the church. Christ's might is power, is strength. That he calls us and he says, this is what you do. He do, doesn't leave us in our weakness. He doesn't leave us in our privacy. He doesn't leave us in our, you know, what, whatever shortcomings and weaknesses we have. He also gives us the might and the strength and the power to be able to follow through on his model. Number three is Christ's ministry through the church. Christ's ministry through the church. He is the one that actually ministers through us wherever we go. We can use his name. We can depend upon his word. We can quote his promise. We can rely upon his spirit. And it is through that he makes us succeed. And we're going to succeed in the ministry in Jesus' name. Number one is Christ's what? Christ's model for the church. Christ's model for the church. Would you know that there was no indolent time, idle time for the Lord Jesus Christ when he came here to this world? He just labored and labored. He said, the work my Father has given me to do, I must finish. And every day he had that kind of concept in his mind. He woke up in the morning and then he said, I'm the light of the world. I must walk while yet it is day. And that model is set for us. It's the same thing you are thinking about. You wake up in the morning, what is it? I've not done that out to do. You're going into all the world and preaching the gospel and touching lives there and touching lives there and touching lives there and bringing them from darkness out of darkness into the gospel light of the Lord. You are asking yourself, what is Zane that I shall follow Christ in. That is, if Christ were here today, in days my community, in days my local government, in days my promise, if Christ Jesus were here today, in days my country, in the conditions in which I find my country, what would Christ have done? That is the model we're trying to follow. And we're going to follow it effectively in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1, you see the former treatise, have I made with you, Philos, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. You see that the Acts of the Apostles are actually a continuation of what Jesus has begun both to do and to teach. He began, he didn't finish it. The whole world had not been converted when Jesus died. All the people in the world had not heard of the gospel. They have not heard of the light that came from heaven. They have not light of this one that came to change everybody's life. They have not heard. And because of that, he began to do it. He set an example. He set a pattern. He laid down a model. And now he says we follow that model. He began to do it. I pray that you will be a continuation. An extension of Christ's ministry. That the model he laid down, you too, you'll follow that in Jesus' name. In John chapter 17, verse 18. John chapter 17, verse 18, it says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. He said, I have shown them the example, and the reason I did that is so that they too, they can do that. The reason I set a model is so that the people who claim to be mine, the people who claim to believe in me, the people who claim to be my disciples, they too, they will follow that model. He said, Father, as you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them. What was Christ's attitude? When Christ, when God sent him to the world, did he complain? No, sir. Did he mama? No. Did he say, this is too hard? No. How could my father send me to such a difficult territory like they were not even here? He came unto his own, and his own received him up. But as many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believed on his name. And that same attitude the Lord wants you to have, the Lord wants me to have. To go into the world, every part of your world, every part of your community. And remember that as Christ was sent to this world, so has the Lord sent you. That you will be able to do what he has come to do. And how did he do it? Actually, I'm looking at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, you'll see the pattern of Jesus Christ and the model of Jesus Christ. And it says, this is exactly what to do. That's how I did it. That's the example I've laid down for you. And that is the pattern of set. That's the model I'm giving you. Matthew chapter 9. Reading there from verse 35. It says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, it said, And Jesus went about. Tell me the rest there. Tell me out loud. 
all cities and villages. Did you see that? That's the model of Jesus Christ. Jesus went about all cities and villages. Do you know there are people who say they are following Christ and they have never gone beyond their city? But they are raising up a large church in their city. They are raising up a militant church in their city. They are raising up a good church in their city. But they never go from city to city. They know the local governments are there. They never go there. They know that the cities are there. They never go there. They know that the villages are there. They never go there. And they say, here we are. We are following Christ. Christ did not stay in one place. All his life. He had the gospel preached to these people, then he moved to others and moved to others, and, and he said, That is the model. That everyone that lives in the name of Christ, everyone that says, I'm, I'm, I'm a disciple of Christ, everyone that says, I'm a minister, I'm following the master, the model of the master, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is what he did that the word of God says, and Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And because that's the way he did it, that's the way we're going to do it. I said, That's the way we're going to do it. And just going to tie down yourself in one place and say you are doing something. You might even feel every day with activity in one place. You have not followed the model of Jesus. You might feel all your time in one place. And you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And you are ministering to the same people from one year to the other. The same congregation from one year to the other. And there's no comfort there. Just, just, just there all the time. And the Lord is saying, how about that other city? That's my model. How about that other village? That's my model. How about that territory? That's my model. How about that local government there? That's my model. And he went from city to city and from village to village. And the disciples followed after the same pattern too. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 11 verse 1. Matthew chapter 11 verse 1 says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their, what? Cities, plural. He departed thence to preach in this. He was mobile. He was, he was, he was moving about. He was teaching the people everywhere. The Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, as well as our standard, is our master, as well as our model. He came to seek and to save the Lord. He came to save the people that were lost in sin. And he's telling us, go do the same thing. And he went to find out the people that were in darkness, not just in one city, not just in one village, everywhere. And he tells us that that model is unique. And that model was very different. Have you noticed the difference between John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ? What did we read about John the Baptist? John stayed in one place, in the wilderness. And the people came from all the cities and they came to him. If you wanted to hear the word of repentance, go to John. John will not come to you. If you wanted to repent and if you wanted to hear that the axe is laid to the root of the tree and everyone that does not bear for a good fruit or they cut down. If you wanted to hear words of life, Peter, and God can forgive you and pardon you and then you can escape the judgment of God. You better help yourself and go to John in the wilderness. John was just in one location and the people went here but Jesus Christ went from place to place. Which model are you following? Whose disciple are you? Why are you just in one place and you are not following the model of the Lord Jesus Christ? As he went from place to place, I pray that God will quicken his word in your heart. And whatever has made you uh, to be static and just to remain in one place, and you cannot take the gospel to the people that need the gospel, and you're just at the backside of the desert there, expecting people to come. You will rise up on this very year, and you go to them in Jesus' name. You'll say a good amen if you're going to do it. We're looking at Mark chapter 6, I'm reading verses 6 and 7. Mark chapter 6. And we're looking at verses 6 and 7. And it says, He marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. When you go to a particular place, they will not believe. He will not say, well, the people are so hard-hearted and the people are so, they are so dense. They are not going to believe the word of God. And because of that, just give it up. No, he didn't give up. And the Bible says immediately, when, when he marveled because of the unbelief, he went round about the villages. The villages too. He went to the cities. He went to the villages. He went to the town. To the towns. He went everywhere in verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two and two 
and give them power over or over on clean spirits. And when you add only 12, only 12, they are not even spent three years with him yet, he sent them out two and two, two by two. That is, don't all go to the same place. How many times, you know, many of us here, uh, we have 100 people, disciples in one place. And it's very difficult to get one or two or ten out of that place. And if anyone ever comes out of those uh, ten people, out of those uh, hundred people, it's like, what's happening? What kind of vision is this? What kind of passion is this? That you know, so and so has been sent here against so and so. That's the model of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to win the world to Christ. We're not going to save the people who are lost in sin if all of us remain in that same place. That's why Jesus Christ called them two by two. And he sent them forth in different places. I'm sure you know that even after he did that, he called the seventy again. And then he sent them forth. If Jesus Christ were here today, and he had all of us here as his disciples, and then he's calling us unto his side so that we can do what we need to do, kingdom work and kingdom service and kingdom labor, he'll be sending us forth, and I believe he's sending us forth. And he's sending you forth, and you're going to do what he has called you to do in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 42. Luke chapter 4, we're reading there from verse 42. We're looking at the model of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the model he has given to the church. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. My Luke chapter 4, I read from verse 42. And when it was day, he departed and went into, the, into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him. That is, they wanted him to stay there, stop there, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Other cities also. Other cities also. If there's anything that is making us to just, you know, lay back and sit back and it's like, you know, we cannot move again. Hey, Pastor, look at me. I'm 50 years of age already. And how do you expect a 50 year old man to still, you know, be up and running and go here and go there? No, we're not looking at your age. We're looking at the Spirit of Christ within you. We're looking at the fire of the Holy Ghost that abides in you. We're looking at the vision that Jesus Christ has put within you. Because it says after watch that He'll fill us with the Holy Spirit. And then it says we'll see visions and dream dreams. What we're saying that if you have the spirit of god in you there's a vision there there's a dream there there's a desire there's a passion there that you want to do what the holy ghost has come into your heart you should like to do if you really have the holy ghost and the vision and the dream and the passion you're not going to just stay back there and say well i'm not 50 years of age i'm 60 years old i'm 70 years of age you rise up and do something and follow after the model of the lord jesus christ and that is why we came to this congress that that fire will come back again that passion will come back again that desire will come back again and will say it doesn't matter like like uh, that a great man of god that's caleb he said i'm now 80 years and 80 80 years and five that is first call years and five he says i'm still as strong as i was 45 years ago when moses sent me out he said joshua you remember when we came back give me this mountain therefore i pray that you have that spirit of caleb within you in jesus name that to say, give me this mountain, you will possess it also. I said you will possess it also. That's why it says in verse 43, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I come. We're looking at chapter 13, chapter 13 of a Luke, and I'm reading there from verse 22. Chapter 13 of Luke, I read, we're, we're reading from verse 22. 13, 22. And he went through the cities and villages. You see that? That's what Jesus always did. And they recorded each in Matthew and Mark and now Luke is telling us. And they tell us in different chapters that Jesus Christ, that he went through the cities and he went through the villages teaching and teaching and journeying or towards Jerusalem. You know, he was going on the journey, he would stop here and preach, then go on in the journey, stop here and preach and go on the journey, stop there and preach. That's how Jesus did it. And the Lord is calling us, said, follow me. Following the Lord Jesus Christ, just said, you know, praise the Lord, I don't smoke anymore. I praise the Lord, you don't smoke anymore. There's more than that. Praise the Lord, I don't drink uh, that kind of thing anymore. Praise, I praise the Lord with you, I'm not drinking anymore. Praise the Lord, I'm, you know, not what I used to be, but you're still sitting down. 
But you're not doing what Jesus called you to do. But you're not going from city to city and village to village. The model that Jesus Christ had laid down that he wants us to follow. And that's what we're going to follow. If we've been negligent in the past, we're rising up at this time. And we're going to do what he has called us to do. As we look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, we are going to discover that you know, he went about to different places. Jesus' unwavering commitment was his devotion to the salvation of everyone in every place, in every city, in every village. He didn't say, well, if, if you want to get saved, I have the word of salvation. Let them come. If they want the light, I am the light of the word. Let them come here. But he went to them. He called sinners to repentance. He discipled those converts. He trained those disciples. He equipped them and he sent them forth. He trained the followers. And he, he kind of tried, tried to reproduce himself in those apostles. He personally went to many cities to teach and to preach. And he also sent his empowered disciples and apostles so that they too, they'll go to many villages and towns and, and, and cities. By the time Christ sent for those apostles, do you know that they were not just three years with him, they were not just four years with him. By the time they were winning thousands to the Lord, they were not yet seven years with him. And many of us have been here now for about 20 years and 25 years and 30 years and more than 30 years. And it's very difficult to move out of one location to another. But now the grace of God will do it. The power of the Holy Ghost will do it in our lives in Jesus' name. And we're not going to wait for any problem, any persecution like the early church to send us out and to scatter us around. We're going to do it voluntarily from the depth of our heart. And we're going to do what the Lord has called us to do. Whatever is tying you to that seat, whatever is tying you to that place, the Lord is going to cut it off in Jesus' name. And then the fire comes in you and then you say, I'm going to possess that place. I'm going to possess that land. I'm going to possess that territory. It will be unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Point number two now is Christ's might for the church. Christ's might for the church. It tells us in Luke, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, after we have been told that Jesus began what to do and to teach. Now he tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which says he, ye have heard of me. He said, they should not depart until they receive the promise of the Father. The implication is once you receive that promise, once you receive that Holy Ghost, once you are baptized in mass, enveloped in the Holy Ghost, when the fire is within you. And once you have the power and the strength, the might of the Holy Ghost, the implication is then you will rise up and go. We are going to go. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. How many people are saying that, you know, I've got the Holy Ghost, I speak in tongues, I have the power. What are you doing with the power? Do you think that God is wasting his resources, the resources of heaven? Well, the Holy Ghost was sitting there, but he said, when that Holy Ghost comes, you'll be witnesses unto me, and not just in one place. You can see the pattern. It says, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. I pray that what the Lord has given us to do, we will do it. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 17, verse 18. Chapter 2, verse 17. It says in verse 17, I shall come, and, and shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out of my spirit upon, how many? All flesh. And then it says, and your, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I've not seen them prophesy. To prophesy means to proclaim. To proclaim the truth of revelation. The revelation that comes from heaven. I don't see them doing that. Sons and daughters, all I see them is just, you know, some of them standing there, keeping quiet. Some of them in their houses where they live. They say they are sanctified, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. And they never say a word for Christ. They never say a word to witness. They never say anything to anybody, anytime, anywhere. And the word of God says that when that Holy Ghost has come, you will prophesy, you will proclaim the truth, the saving truth of the Lord. And then it says, it says over here, and that your young man shall see what? Visions. 
I never see anybody say you they don't see visions anymore. It's just as it was, so it is, and so it will ever be. No revelation. There's nothing new that anybody is doing or anybody is reading anymore. Nobody is saying, Well, I see this God is sending me to that territory. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord opened my eyes, and now I see that I need to go over there, or I need to go over there. I've been doing this over here. I can hand over this one to another person. There are many other people who are qualified to do this, but the Lord is giving me vision to reach that place and reach that place and reach that place when the Holy Ghost comes that's his ministry that's what he does but then we have the Holy Ghost there's no vision we have the Holy Ghost there's no dream we have the Holy Ghost there's nothing there's no destination there's nothing that is new that the Lord is saying this is what you do I'm just wondering for you know uh, the people that are in the church like this in different like, retreat all those wonderful messages and then congress all those wonderful messages and then we have this other one, wonderful messages and this other and we pile message upon message upon message and then we pray and pray and pray and then we say we have the Holy Ghost I can't see the evidence. I can't see the evidence. The evidence is that when he comes, then you'll prophesy. You will not be able to hold him. The fire will be burning within your heart and within your bones and within your soul. You will open your mouth and say something. It's like when you put a kettle of a kettle of water on the fire. If the thing is boiling inside, that lead cannot remain there. It will blow it up. And when the Holy Ghost fire is right there within you, it will stir you up. It will kind of remove the lead off you. You, and then you will open your mouth and talk to people around you. It's going to begin to happen. And then you begin to see far because he gives you the eyes of the eagle. You see the people who are in need. You see those who are sick. You see those who are sinners. You see the people that are under privilege. You see them. That vision will be in your heart and you will not be able to say you to stay in a place alone. You want to declare the word of God. In fact, he tells us, if you look at uh, this uh, verse 17, and it says the old man shall dream dreams. You know some dreamers in the Bible. You remember Joseph, he was a dreamer. And he saw the dream of what he was still going to achieve. And once some people get a little bit old now, what is their dream? No dream anymore. And they cannot say, I have a dream. I have a vision. I have a revelation. They say, well, you younger people go and do that. You know, well, we used to have uh, this uh, passion and this desire. And I'm telling you, we used to have some dreams. We used to have some visions and revelation. And we'll say, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. But you know, uh, look at me now. And you will see that, well, as the, the older we get, the colder we become. We cannot uh, do anything yet. Anyway, you younger people are there. We have raised you up. Now you can go and be dreaming. My Bible says that when the Holy Ghost comes, that young men, the sons and the daughters will prophesy. And those sons will see visions. And the old men are going to be left behind. They are not going to be left behind. And they are going to retire or retreat. It says they will dream. Dream. And if you have any old man there, any old woman there, you want to pray for them that God will bring that dream back to their lives again in Jesus' name. So that as all of us get together, the sons and the daughters and the young men and the young women and the older folks, then all of us with that kind of vision, revelation, we will do something and accomplish something in this generation for the glory of the Lord. And the Lord is saying that when the Holy Ghost has come, we move out and we get something done and it's going to be done. I said it's going to be done. I'm looking at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And it from verse 49. He gave us the promise of the Father. And when that promise of the Father is fulfilled, then it's done its part, which we have to do our part. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father. The promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in Jerusalem until... What's the meaning of that language? You tarry until, after you've got you, you don't tarry anymore. You don't wait anymore. You don't sit back anymore. You don't say nothing to be done anymore. You tarry only until you be, you be deal with power from on high. And uh, after they got that power, were they still waiting? Were they still tarrying? 
whether to be idleness, not to be laziness, that they got the power, they had to do something. You see, when we read Acts chapter 1, verse 1, that speaks of all things that Jesus began to do and to teach. And we're commanded to teach all things whatsoever Christ has taught and Christ has commanded. And uh, because that is what he has said, and we see the pattern of Christ, so we follow in the same way the power of the Holy Ghost as we promise to every believer. It's yours. If you have not been baptized, you are going to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you have been baptized, but now it's like you never even had a taste of the Holy Spirit. You know, it reminds me of, you know, some of us who have gone to school. We labored quite a lot and studied quite a lot. And then eventually we went for that final exam and we, we passed that exam. Some of us even had, you know, some, uh, some real distinctions in, uh, in passing the exam. And then after one month or three months or five months, after one year, after three years, we, we have stopped studying. We have stopped learning anything. Even though we had distinction in the exam that we took. If you want to, you know, bring us back now, back to school and say, can you try that? I don't even know the meaning of all those symbols anymore. That's how it happens to some people. That they don't know anything, a joke, a teacher, of the things they had distinctions on in the past. There are some people in the church, they have the Holy Ghost, and it's like they had distinction. They could pray. They could read the Word of God. They could have understand. They could have passion. They could have dream. They could have vision. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, but after one year, the Holy Ghost came. After two years, the Holy Ghost came. After three years, five years, the Holy Ghost came. Nothing anymore. They are not hearing from heaven anymore. They read the Word of God almost like ordinary book. They do not have any inspiration from the Word of God anymore. They cannot listen to the Word of God anymore. There is no fire within them anymore. Did you tell me you were filled with Holy Ghost? I'm telling you, Pastor, I was filled with Holy Ghost. Those good, wonderful days when I prayed like this, I would not know how to stop praying. How is it today? Pastor, I don't understand. You come back. You come back to the fireplace. And here is that fireplace. You are going to get it in Jesus' name. If you will kind of abandon everything around you, say, I don't care for this, I don't care for that. All I want, I want that fire back, I want that power back, I want that authority, I want that anointing back. In this Congress, the Lord will be for you in Jesus' name. And then when God puts you into that fire of the Holy Ghost again, and you're born within, and you're stirred up within, and all that cow cowardice, God blows everything away, and all that laziness, God kind of wipes everything and when the fire begins to burn again, all of a sudden before you leave this congress I begin to see vision and you know sometimes in the past and some of us we didn't even know that this particular country existed, we didn't know that those people existed, we were just sleeping in the night and we began to see the geography and we began to see the history we began to see the faces of the people and the Lord is saying those are I'm sending to and then we woke up in the morning and then the things we had in the dream because he shall have dreams and he shall have vision and revelation, we went to check up, we said, ah, that's the place God was talking about, or it is that after God has revealed something to us, he just mentioned a particular, a particular country, a particular tribe, a particular country, a particular tribe, and we never had that before, and then somebody is discussing with us, and he's saying that, you know, I went to such and such a place, exactly the same place, the Lord has been talking to us about, that. where is that today? What is that revelation today? What is that vision today? What is that thing that the Lord is telling us all that is gone? But the Lord is saying, I will do it again. Amen. What he did before that word vision, what he did before we had revelation, he says, I'm going to reproduce that in this church once again in Jesus' name. I cannot begin to tell the testimonies of the past. Some men and women in this ministry, had, they had this burden and they had this great pressure within them. And they went out and souls came to know the Lord in some miraculous ways. And praying that those wonderful days will come back in your life, in my life, in our lives together in Jesus' name. It comes with the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we promise to you and to me. And Christ who is a Savior, Christ who is a sanctifier, the same Christ. And the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, he has promised that all of us, all of us appointed as witnesses, shall be endued with power from on high. The promise belongs to everyone. And tonight, that promise will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. The might and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the sanctified believer is to impart power. 
That's part to live victoriously, to impart power. That's part to preach and pursue it, to impart power to us. That's power to prevail in prayer. It is power to heal. It is power to deliver. To deliver the captives. It is power to conquer and to overcome. I will conquer. I will overcome. When this power comes upon your life, all the things that appear are so important, they are going to pin us. Unimportant. Unessential. I don't want to waste your life on non-essential. But that power comes and the power is the power to minister with divine authority. The power to operate with supernatural strength. The power to receive the enemy and destroy the power of the enemy. The baptism in the Holy Ghost. The continual outpouring of the Spirit, the renewal and refreshing by the Spirit, the impartation of the steward of the gifts of the Spirit, the extraordinary manifestation of the Spirit at all hours. Today, you'll have yours in Jesus' name. And when that power comes, what are you going to do? Of course, you're going to follow the ministry. That's lead me to point number three Christ's ministry through the church. Christ's ministry through the church. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Immediately that power came. You look at here from verse 1. Uh, we're looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I read from verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I believe your day has come. I believe your week has come. Already the Lord spoke to us at the beginning of this uh, of this year. I thought just yesterday, the first uh, day of the first month of this year. And he's saying that uh, that was a prophetic day. And it's going to be a prophetic day in your life in Jesus' name. I hope that when you hear something prophetic like that, you don't, don't just pass it by. And just allow this week to run by and become like another week. Because this week is going to be peculiar. It's going to be unique and supernatural in our lives in Jesus' name. If the Lord started supernaturally on that first day of the week, it was the first, the first week, the whole week to be supernatural. And if the first day and the first week are supernatural, it was the first month to be supernatural. And if you can go to on your knees and then you bend your knees and then you bow your head and just dip your head between your knees and say, Lord, this day, this week, this month, this first month, I want to be, I want it to be very special. If you can do that and discipline yourself and determine this first month and get all of heaven, your soul, in your heart, in your mind, and then this year it is it will be like you never knew anything before. Something great will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And, and look at these disciples of Jesus Christ. When the day of Pentecost was really come, it says they were all with one accord in one place. You see, as we come over here, we're not uh, criticizing A or B. We're not uh, having conflict with anybody. We just have, you know, one spirit and one mind and one soul with one accord in one place. And you know what hinders the move of the spirit in the midst of the people of God? As we come together, it's like, you know, we, we think that, you know, I must have my way and you can have your way and he can have his way and she can have, you know, her ways. And then we have a lot, hundred ways, a thousand ways that we are following the divergent ways. But when we all come together and we say the only thing that is important is this unity of the spirit so the passion and the fire the Lord wants to pour upon us will come upon us and when all those divisions are gone all the conflict is gone all the disagreement everything is gone all the murmuring everything is gone and all the kind of you know I'm looking up here is looking down I'm looking here is looking all that is gone when you all with one accord in one place in this place we are going to be of one accord you know, there are people now, it's like, you know, anything that you're doing, I don't agree with that, I don't agree with that. That disagreeable spirit is going to hinder you from having the vision back and the revelation back. And nothing is going to hinder me in this place. I said, nothing is going to hinder me in this place. I'm going to get everything the Lord has for me in Jesus' name. And you are going to get it as well in Jesus' name. And says, suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they appeared unto them, clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled. How many of them were filled? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and to speak gave them utterance. That's there, we have verse 14, but Peter standing up with the eleven. Not standing up against the eleven. Standing up with the eleven. You understand, we can, you may be the only one speaking and may be a disagreeable speaker. You may be the only one speaking or be an agreeable speaker. 
Peter stood up with the eleven, not against the eleven. You know, when you come in here to preach the word of God, you're standing with the rest of us. You're saying, I'm just here representing the whole body of believers, the whole body of preachers over here, standing up for the eleven. It says he lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of ye men of Judea, and all ye that go in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my voice. Do you know that at the end of that message, verse 37, now when they heard this, they were preached in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They said unto Peter and they said to the rest of the apostles. Only one man was speaking, but all the other apostles were in agreement. They were unity with him. And the people recognized that unity and they said, they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then it was through Peter that gave the answer, repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As Peter was speaking, all the other preachers, all the other apostles, they were in agreement with him, saying amen in their heart. Yes, Lord, in their heart. And Lord, let it be. And the people could see that agreement. That's how those 3,000 became born again. As we got united with a united for voice, united force, and they will speak the word of God in that spirit of unity. You will see that the mighty power of God and the strength of the Lord will come upon the people, conviction will come upon them, and there will be real conversion and transformation in the lives of the people in Jesus' name. It comes as a sort of unity when there's an, an agreeable spirit in you that the word of God is going on. And then you say, if I were there, I would say the same thing like that. If I were there, I would say the same thing. It's that unity that brings the power of the Holy Ghost upon the lives of the people. And in this Congress, the Lord is going to do that through us and for us in Jesus' name. And then when the power of the Holy Ghost is there, it is that that will bring the transformation in the lives of the people. Because it, there's no point just preaching and then we just enjoy the message. No transformation, no change in the lives of the people. But a change will come first of all in your own heart. I said a change will come first of all in your own heart. And the change in my heart, the change all together. And then with the power of transformation that happens to us, then we can go and transform the lives of other people. It will happen in Jesus' name. That's why it says, look at me of force in verse 40. It says, and with many other words, did he testify and exhort saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation, then they that, uh, they that gladly heard, received this word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them. Tell me that there are many people, about 3,000 souls. How oh, I pray that that same revival will come back today in Jesus' name. But look at how they did that after that, after the Holy Ghost came. You remember the model of Jesus Christ, not just staying in one place, in one Jerusalem, in one city, and they went from city to city and village to village. Let's see how they did it when the Holy Ghost came upon them. And what the Lord is telling us, we too will, will do, will follow the example, the model of the Lord Jesus Christ, the incoming and indwelling of the Holy Ghost in our lives. We're looking at Acts chapter 8, verse 25. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in, tell me, many villages of the Samaritans. They didn't just stay in one place, and that's what the Lord is telling us. Are you an apostle? Preach it in many villages, in many towns, in many cities. Look at verse 14. Look at verse 40. This believe that the Lord had sent to Samaria. Great things that happened in that city of Samaria. In chapter 8, verse 40, it says, But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. And that's how they did it, and that's how we're going to do it. We're looking at Acts chapter 16, verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 16. Verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 16, verses 4 and 5. It says, And as they went through the cities, you see that? They just followed Jesus Christ. They used to just in one place. The Holy Ghost had come. And the Holy Ghost 
to let them through the path of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus would have done. He'll go from city to city. He'll go from village to village. And now you have got the same Holy Ghost that came on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that Holy Ghost is going to be doing the same thing through you. And it says, it says in that verse, in that verse 4, and they went through the cities. They delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were Jerusalem. And it says, and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. It wasn't just, you know, in the Easter period, the increase, or not only out of publicity for December, it should increase. It said, increased in number daily. Why? Because we are ministering every day, preaching the word of God every day. That's the model Jesus Christ had left, and that's the model that these disciples followed. In fact, as you read the record in the Acts of the Apostles, it reveals that the early church saturated the cities with the gospel. Starting from Jerusalem, it says, He have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And then when you come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, it says, Thou seest how many thousands of Jews there are which believe in this city. And then they moved on throughout all quarters. They moved on throughout all the cities. Look at chapter 9, verse 32. Chapter 9, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. We're looking at verse, uh, we're looking at verse 32. From all quarters. Uh, they came to the gospel, they came to know the Lord. And that's what the Lord is uh, giving to us today, that from all quarters we take the gospel, and to all the quarters we take the gospel, and take the gospel everywhere. Acts chapter 9 verse 32. It says, and it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters. See that? Not just Jerusalem. Peter passed throughout all quarters. He preached in this quarter, preached in that province, preached in that area, preached in that community, just passed through. Just preaching the word and preaching the word. Pass through all quarters. It says, uh, we were told that he came down also to the say to the saints which dwelt at Lida. By the time you meet uh, these apostles and see what 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 they have done, the cities have been reached, including Samaria and Damascus and Lydia and Joppa and Caesarea and Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch and Seleucia and Salamis and uh, Paphos and then they are gone to Paga, they are gone to Iconium, Lystra, Derby, they are gone to Pisidia, they are gone to Pamphylia, they are gone to Atalaya, they are gone to the city of Lyconia and they are gone to Philippi and Thessalonica and Berea and Athens and Corinth and Ephesus and so on. Just within a few years they had gone to all those places and the Lord is saying, as the people did it in the power of the Holy Ghost, it's calling us today that we too will do it in the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Their focus was on preaching the gospel and establishing the church in every city, every city, every city. And now that the Lord has given us that commission once again, reminding us of the commission once again, we're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. And this time, nothing will stop us and nothing will hinder us and nothing will delay us or tie us down in Jesus' name. When a fire of the Holy Ghost comes, it will burn up every cord and everything that is, that is you know, tying us down. It will break every chain that tries to tie us down and the work of the Lord will prosper in our hands. I said the work of the Lord will prosper in our hands. I want you to see how the, even the people, they commented about them. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. And see what the people said about uh, this mighty army and this great army and this irresistible army that took the gospel from place to place. Acts of the Apostles chapter six, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 6. It says in verse 6, And when they found them not in good Jesus, and certain brethren, Unto the rulers of the city crying, These men that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. That was their complaint. And these were unbelievers. They said, We've heard the sound of their approach. We've heard everything they've done. These are the people that have turned the world upside down. Look at chapter 19, verse 10. 
in chapter 19 verse 10 it says and, and this continued by the space of two years so that all all they which dwelt in asia heard the word of the lord jesus both jews and greeks it says all the people that dwelt in asia asia was not just a city asia was uh, like you know a kind of a country a kind of territory a kind of a, a continent in a way and yet it says all of them heard the gospel and look at chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 8 there and acts of the apostles chapter 18 verse 8 it says and it's uh, christmas and the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the lord with all his house and many of the corinthians here believed and were baptized and it says then speak the lord unto paul in uh, in a, in a night by in the very by vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace from now you will not be afraid again for i am with thee he will be with you and no man shall say to thee to hurt thee for i have tell me much people in this city have you ever seen a vision like that it's a revelation like that that the Lord is saying in that city have much people. That city have much people. That city have much people. And if God is revealing that to you, what are you doing about it? Look at verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them because of that revelation. See what an unbeliever said in chapter 19. Chapter 19, verse 26. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19 verse 26 they realized the force the mighty force of this mighty gospel reaching out to everyone chapter 19 verse 26 it says moreover you see and hear that not only not alone at Ephesus but almost throughout all Asia this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people saying that there be no gods which are made with hands this is an unbeliever. We're talking about what Paul had done. He said it's not just in Ephesus, but throughout Asia, you have seen what this Paul has done. Turning away people from idolatry and turning them away from darkness unto the light and bringing them under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and bringing the gospel to bear in their lives. And that's what he did, and that's how we're going to do it. In Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 10, verse 18. Romans chapter 10, look at verse 18. It says, But I say, have you not heard? Yea, verily, there are sounds which into all the earth. You see that? Even in that early, early time, it says there are sounds which into all the earth, and there are words unto the ends of the world. And God has given us all the opportunity once again today. And He has said that now the vision is coming back. The passion is coming back. The dream is coming back. And I said we should go into all the world. This is the imperative of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ unto some people. And we are going to follow through on what He has called us to do in Jesus' name. We are going to rise up. We are going to commit ourselves to the Lord. That what the Lord has given us, this gospel will not die at your doorstep. That it has come to you in the power of the Holy Ghost and you are going to follow the model of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has called us as a church. He has called us as a ministry. He has called us a flock of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has called us as a congregation of believers that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we are following the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to do as he has done. Open your mouth and talk to them and say, Oh Lord, here am I. If you are part of the church, the church is the congregation. The church is a flock of the sheep that believe him, that follow him, and that obey him. You are telling the Lord, O oh Lord, here am I. I'm going to obey your word. I'm not going to wait, wait for emotion. I'm not going to wait for my feeling. I'm not going to wait for this or that. I know that your call has come to me today. And I want to follow after that. I want to follow after that call. The Lord has called you. You want to tell the Lord, O oh Lord, here am I. O oh Lord, here am I. O oh Lord, here am I. I'm a sheep in the fold, a sheep in the flock, and I believe, and I'm going to follow, I'm going to obey. Are you part of the assembly of called out people, converted people, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? And then you want to abandon whatever it is in your life, whatever it is, that will slow you down. You want to say, Oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. Take my life. And you seek for the glory. Take my voice. Let me speak the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Ghost. Take all my resources, O Lord, and use for the propagation of the gospel. Be a disciple, be a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you're able to endure hardness or not having the directions. It tells you, see, that place is difficult, that place is tall. That place looks impossible. Be a soldier. I say, Lord, I lay down everything. You have the authority over my life, the control over my life, divine ownership over my life. Soldiers don't work for emotion, feeling. I feel great, I feel good, I feel sad, I feel joyful, I feel happy. No! Soldiers know their duty, feeling no feeling, emotion or no emotion. They go ahead and do the will of, of, their, of the master, of the captain. And we are soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ and his army. And the Lord is calling us, here is what to do. And so just don't look at difficulties and challenges. That's why they're soldiers. The Lord calls you. Says be a soldier. A good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever challenges you face, whatever difficulties arise, whatever the enemy may do or say, he calls you. He's shown us the example. He's given us the model. Of reaching every village in that community, reaching every town in that province and that local government area, reaching every city, major cities and mega cities, everywhere, so that all in Asia, all in that region, all in that locality, all in that country, were here. The word of the Lord. And Jesus trained the disciples. Once also trained the workers he has given us. Those disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. In our local churches. Train them. Develop them, equip them, send them forth. Organize them, enlist them in the work of the Lord. You yourself can do a Lord. Let the Holy Ghost come again. Let him fill your heart again. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to burn once again. And when that fire burns, to burn all the chaff, all the cause that tie you to the past. When the fire burns, look when this will go away. The light of heaven will come to replace the darkness. Once again, there will be visions. Once again, there will be dreams of religion so far, of territory so far, of the people that are watching. Waiting to receive the gospel. Waiting to come from darkness to light. Waiting to be turned from the power of Satan onto the power of God. Be filled with the Holy Ghost once again. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost once again. Be immersed in the Holy Ghost once again. Let the power return. Power to live victoriously, let it return. Power to preach, power to prophesy, let it return. Power 
altar for daily prayer. Let us return. Part of heal, part of deliver. Let the power come back as of old. Power to minister with authority. Let the power return. Let all disagreeable spirits flee. This Congress, make up your mind that this is going to be the first week of the year with destiny. That your life, through the impartation of this week, will fulfill. A God ordained destiny. Let it be a desire, a thirst, be willing to tarry the process of the Lord, be willing to wait, be willing to pray. We're willing to lay everything upon the altar. We need to pay the price, whatever it will take. We need to consecrate. So what the Lord has brought you here for, what the Lord has obeyed, that to receive and possess an experience this week. will be done without any restraint without any limitation Christ's imperative commission commandment is given to you being part of the church Rise up to the challenge. Rise up to the calling. Say, Lord, I know I can. I will. I must.